Greetings, ladies and managers, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series, The Nature of Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 175. Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Soblin, United Nations Fleet Command. Date, Standardized Human Time, March 26, 2137. The captured Colchian sentry led us up several flights of stairs. After the UN soldiers rejected taking the elevator, and I waited with unease for the trap to show itself, it was only a modest room with an elderly Colchian, with a baby blue skin and a pompous air about them, waited. The figure claiming to be Morona's gestured to the seats, an offer Tyler accepted after some hesitation. I plopped down next to the blonde human, while the skeptical-looking Orcel found a chair next to me. Onlookers from the UN and Colchian dissenters packed into the room, ready to bring the Commonwealth leader into custody. Would he be wise enough to surrender? Moronus leaned forward. Well, humans, before you say a word, let me answer the obvious question. I am Chief Moronus, the successor to Nicodus, but unlike him, I don't paint a target on my back. I've tried to operate from the shadows, and everything I've done has been to crush dissent and ensure the continuance of our work. I don't know if your kind can understand, but you simply must. I understand you built quite at the underground city here. How many residents? Tyler prompted. Millions in the city alone. This is the shadow capital, a mirror to what you see above ground. But there are other residences beneath our city with separate entrances. You could find your way into one of them by bullet train. Much of our space was devoted towards the Shadow Fleet before your breed destroyed them. I don't know what I hope from this conversation. I believe you do care about your friends. So maybe if you realize that you're exposing them to a tremendous harm, you'll do the right thing. What are you talking about? I'll explain everything. I can see several of my own citizens are curious to find out why we needed to protect them from predators. Let me start by directing a question at your off-world gojit friend, Captain Sovlin. How would you feel knowing you and any other herbivores who've interacted with the humans could wither from the inside out? That your mental faculties could vanish in an instant years later? I waved my claws dismissively. I feel nothing, because it's not true. Predator contamination is a lie, Moronas. Everything the Federation taught is wrong. The humans aren't a disease. Don't sound so convinced. You came here to ask why we began taking action against predators. I intend to tell you the full story, and after I do, we'll see if you still want to be sitting right next to one of those things. A disease... It's precisely what they are, and I'll lay out a scientific accounting for why that is. You cannot argue with a mountain of evidence. Not unless you're the Federation, Samantha sneered. Did some animal rot after it died and you convinced it's tainted? No, it was much worse than that. The Colchian race was placed in immense peril by the filth that festers in the predator's fluids, and in the human's defense... I don't think they realize what they're doing. Was Moronus really trying to sell his triad argument of predator exposure, giving us predator disease? Terran therapists had shown that mental conditions were more complex, as were the actual neurological causes behind them. It was fear-mongering to allude that I'd show signs in a non-specific amount of years. Well, we hadn't known the Earthlings long enough to disprove that. They'd not passed any ill effects to the prey animals on their blue marble, I leaned back in contempt, though I noticed Orcel scooting her chair further away from the humans. She wouldn't take much convincing to believe that the primates were an infectious threat, given her instinctual disgust of them. I am curious what scientific accounts Moronus thinks he can string together. He does sound like he believes it himself, just like Nakonis did. I do not want to know what pushed Ava down a path of causing so much harm to hundreds of sapient species. Whatever the truth was, it could be as simple as one predator being a carrier for many diseases, and the Commonwealth applying that logic to anything that ate flesh. Even if it were true about humans, we knew that alien diseases didn't cross species threshold, due to differences in biology. I was at a loss, conjuring my own explanations. 
It seemed my Terran companions were mystified too. Tyler confirmed that his helmet camera was rolling, fully intending to capture every word the Colchian said on video. He rested his elbows on the table, sensing the juicy information was about to flow. The blonde human's expression was hidden beneath his mask. Speak! Tell us everything. From the very beginning, how the Shadow Cars came to be is our business. Well, it started with a string of mysterious deaths, decades before we made first contact with the fossil. The strange disease was 100% lethal and unresponsive to our medicines. So if symptoms showed, it was a death sentence. Maronus pulled up a series of mass graveyards and ghastly images of sickly conscience. They would lose their memory and their sensibilities, resulting in aggression and delusion. At first, the plague didn't seem to be transmissible from person to person, so we didn't quarantine victims with the... A strict enough tentacle. It was only years later that the people who had contact started showing symptoms. That's a long ass incubation period, Sam commented. Indeed. There wouldn't be a trace of any microbial agents in their tissue, and yet their brains were rapidly and positively ravaged. Once we clued in onto the staggering delay in symptom onset, scientists were able to piece together at the origin. Stories from years before the victim, where a local predator called a Tirani went off the deep end and started dropping dead in the wild. Select other animals in the East Coast system, to a lesser degree, had also begun to decay. We established a link between the increased predator activity and the deaths that had plagued us. Tyler recoiled in confusion. I don't understand how the Colchians get infected to begin with. How's it spread? You all roam the wilds enough for a plague to pop off. We didn't know what the contaminant was, and we still don't. What we are certain of is that it has contaminated the soil and water because victims were linked to nearby water mains and food shipments from the Tarani Plague's epicenter. That's why we can tell you scientifically that contact with predators and their byproducts lead to an irreversible decline. We called the disease the hunger, and the entire government banded together to nip it in the butt. The hunger, I murmured, that's what you called the human's vitamin deficiency in the archives. Now oh, you understand, and you'll understand how everything we've done has been to stop the scourge from ever showing its face. I'll address the human element after I've laid the groundwork, so there's no seeds of doubt. But to grasp where the shadow cars came from, I hope our citizens can understand what we're protecting them from. You have to know how we stopped the spread of the disease. Samantha groaned. Let me guess. Burn everything. Actually, yes. Fire seemed to be the only thing that could cleanse away the contaminants. While Chief Marona searched up a few images of disease control effects, I considered what I'd just learned. The humans weren't reacting with enough concern towards this invisible plague that only showed with tendrils of infection years later. The photographs that the Colchian chieftain was displaying seemed like genuine historical documents. Had the Terrans not warned us about a risk of them spreading the hunger for fear that it would push us away? Perhaps they had a cure for it from this B12 vitamin. But I didn't understand why the transmissible agent didn't show in any tests. Orsel looked more petrified than I was, and with her extended contact with my friends today. Maybe predator disease can be caused by other factors than the infectious agent, but the Gaultians were right about microbes being one cause. I just find it difficult to believe that caring humans would put the Vendel at risk like that. I've seen firsthand how empathetic and protective they are towards their friends. Surely they would have warned the Governor Tava, except Marona's claims they're unaware. The chief pulled up data clips of Colchian exterminators in full body suits, which had complex air filters atop the standard getup. I could see them burning the sickly corpses of curved fang predators, and in some cases, living specimens that showed symptoms of the disease. In later timestamps, they had set out to wipe out Tarani out entirely, even ones that hadn't presented with signs yet. The most horrifying footage was them tranquilizing their own infected citizens before burning them alive. Corpses from the mass graveyard were also dug up and incinerated to slow the soil contamination. 
This ghastly outbreak explained why they were so determined to cleanse predators from every ecosystem. The exterminators were born. That fire suit acts not only as a safeguard from the flamethrowers, but also as a biohazard suit. Not unlike the gear the humans are wearing now. Those masks just might protect the cultures you've interacted with today, Moronis continued. Other predators besides the Tarani were attracting the disease too, so we aimed to kill all of them. Any animal corpses had to be incinerated before its entrails could settle. Our own dead were reservoirs of disease too. It's the reason we have forsaken our aquatic roots. The water was its preserver. We've kept up those practices to this day to prevent it from ever returning, here or on other worlds. I swallowed with unease, disquieted by my months in close quarters with Terence. Chief, might I ask, does this relate to predator disease at all? It does. By tearing down those predator disease facilities, those humans are crippling your ability to detect the disease early. Aggression is one of the primary signs. Besides that, we couldn't afford to have any non-conformists violating our quarantine policies or engaging in predatory behavior. We barely kept a lid on the spread. That's all well and dandy, but I don't hear nothing about a shadow cast, Tyler pointed out. It doesn't sound like you were doing this in secret. We weren't. With the public health measures being so obvious, the secrecy didn't start until long after we put the plague to bed. When we turned our attention starward, we made contact with the fossil and eventually told them about the hunger. They were able to point out isolated instances of Tulsix animals suffering inexplicable declines in post-first contact times. While not as contagious as our case, it seems to have jumped to their kind on occasion. We feared we brought the disease with us. We used old quarantine methods before the contaminants could mutate to their most transmissible form to stop the fossil from facing a similar outbreak to Arthur. Sam crossed her arms. You magically knew that it was the same sickness and that it would turn out the same as your hunger shit. Even if this one wasn't the same pathogen, it was close enough to hit home. Convergent evolution is our universe's reality, Predator. It's why we see such similar patterns in all worlds. All life forms exist to accelerate entropy. Chaos is the natural state of all we observe, and there is nothing that can facilitate such large-scale disarray and decline as this disease does. Lethal contaminants and predators are two tentacles of entropic force. It's why your ilk are found on all worlds. We do not accept this axiom. Man, we don't accept your people calling us predators, but you always find a way to do it anyway. Why don't you skip to the part where the shadow cast comes into the picture? It all traces back to the crow cattle, and the fossil stopping us from doing what was necessary. It was a regrettable mistake to chance flesh eaters escaping our oversight. Shall I continue, or is this long-maned one going to interrupt my story further? Your cell squeezed her eyes shut. Please, let him continue, Samantha. It explains a lot about why we're disgusted by predators. Their response is triggered by ancestral sources of disease. It's why humans are leery of insects, I remarked. I'd also like to hear the rest of Maron's story, Sam. I'm, uh, concerned. You shouldn't be. We're not radiating invisible biohazards, for fuck's sakes. But since Tyler's so keen on getting this jackass on record, I'll let him talk a little longer, the Australian soldier conceded. Good. I need to hear what he was going to say about the Krogattle. Nikonis mentioned that they were aggressive, and that the Colgians tried to find the source of it. Maybe Nishtal's population was carrying the hunger, too. The tenants I thought I hadn't held in shred of truth were starting to make sense in light of such dangerous contaminants that predators could pass along. At this point, I doubted the chief had any incentive to lie, and he had the weight of evidence on his side. Moronis's insinuation was that his people wanted to exterminate the crow cattle the second they identified the dietary risk. The question was why the fossil states had pushed back against it, and how they crafted the curing process. 
This could be the reason why my own species was converted away from omnivory rather than killed. It might give us the full story of the conspiracy's founding and goals. Marinus waved a tentacle dismissively. You know the deal. The crow cattle were aggressive, and when we noticed their diet, it explained why their temperament was so much different from ours. Contaminants in meat impacted higher thinking, culminating in the hunger after large quantities of buildup. Perhaps passed down after it affects genes. We wanted a glass nishtal, but the fossil couldn't live with getting another sapient race. Not without exhausting alternatives. The cure, I breathed. Yes, the archives were established on Tosk as a secluded location for the experiments. None the way to quarantine cured specimens. The hunger didn't present symptoms for years, so lengthy testing was the only way to gauge whether they'd been mellowed. The fossil's gene edits worked, to our surprise, and the Federation's purpose was born. We'd stop all sapiens from eating meat and cleanse their worlds to prevent exposure to the hunger. Sam drummed her fingers with impatience. I still hear fuck all about the shadow cast. That all happened because there was public backlash to what we did to the crow cattle. Nishtal didn't appreciate being saved at gunpoint either, and we worried that they could seek regression someday. The shadow cast was formed of those who believed in the cause, and with the fossil's aid, we set out to wipe the record and disguise future cures. The only way to ensure the cured species never found out the past was to make their own citizens unaware. Why is it that we don't know the full extent of the predator threat, that our lives meant nothing to you? It clearly didn't even work, because everyone found out the truth, Orsal spat. You helped the Axel, and then these humans were left alive. Darling, our plan worked for centuries, until arrogant Nokonus blabbed everything to a reporter, just like he set about to reclaim anyone who rebelled against us, instead of just crushing them like I did. They had their one chance during their uplifting. I agree, not knowing the full threat was a problem. The plague is still in the history books, but Arthur forgot why the pandemic was so scary. We needed a threat to continue to enforce our laws and remind people why predators were dangerous. The Oxor were perfect for that. You wanted a war for my family to get fecking eaten alive so that you had an excuse to keep up your quarantine measures, I hissed. Yes, you get it, Sovlin. Back to the caution lady's point about our uh, predator occupiers here and now. That's on the fossil. They refused to kill humanity like we ordered and lied about it, even though it was clear these primates were beyond salvation. We tried to fix them, the same as any omnivore, but the quarantine Terrans in the archives all exhibited traits of the hunger. We know now that a cobalamin vitamin gives them some strange, long-lasting immunity, rendering the disease dormant and allowing sustained sapience. This requires further study. Samantha slapped her forehead. So you do know about B12, then? We got some humans to talk about how they could adapt to plants without dying during our personal experiments at Baloo. We believe these renewed curing efforts might have been successful in ridding you of the disease if you long-term abstained from flesh. Ain't happening, for many reasons, not least. I know you can't give up your addiction on your own. But listen, if you care about your friends you've been infecting, who could start dying in a few years without warning, you must continue our work. If you can, you'll leave the herbivores alone. Maybe you'll even become a new threat, enough to remind the masses to be afraid of predators. It is a sacrifice someone must make. My eyes watered with sorrow as Chief Moronis finished presenting his case. His explanation fit with everything we'd uncovered along our journey, and it gave a reason for the Federation's entire history. It seemed a cruel twist of fate that a loyal, friendly humanity would be asked to make that sacrifice, to isolate themselves so not to contaminate their friends. 
I came to love my crew aboard the Monahan ship, and while the contamination sounded like a terrible way to go, I was willing to die for the Terrans' right to exist. Their culture was too rooted in hunting for them to give up their identity and cure themselves. If humans were immune to the hunger, as long as they could access B-12, keeping to Earth and forsaking the Sapien Coalition might be the best option. I knew that they'd never be the Oxal, not with how their empathy had prevailed time and again. My spines bristled as I waited for Tidus' response, which would address how the Terrans would handle this latent threat Moronis described. It didn't seem fair that, after all this work to observe the Colchians as the galaxy's supreme power, the Predators had to take their place in some capacity. They didn't deserve to suffer for factors beyond their control. It's not their fault that they've been spreading the hunger. I don't think what the Colchians did was right, but we can't let predatory disease wipe out the galaxy. Tyler raised a finger in a wait-a-minute gesture. That's a nice theory, except for the fact that it's all horseshit. We ain't infection and B-12 don't work like that. Your hunger is caused by prions, man. Misfolded brain proteins, Samantha chimed in. Freak mutations that are transmissible if you make contact with infected tissue. The reason you see it in most predators is because they eat said tissue. Chief Moronis blinked, dumbfounded. You know what causes the hunger? You can treat it. I heard what you did with the Argives' rescues. The two aren't related. Prion diseases aren't treatable, but we can detect them with blood tests. We're not infected by this virtue of being predators or eating meat. That's the difference between us. We live in a world of science, and you live in a world of fear and speculation. We seek proof and answers, but you seek verification of your existing beliefs. Tyler bobbed his head. Our vision might be narrower than yours, but at least we ain't blind as you all. Sounds to me like you did all of that horrible shit for nothing. It sounds like that to me too, Orsal hissed, while the Gaussian dissenters piped up with agreement. You believe Terrans are moral and care for their friends. You said so. You have zero proof the humans or any omnivores are dangerous after all. You tried to scare us into believing that it was dangerous to be around them. They're people like us, not biohazards or a threat. I'm sorry I considered it for a minute, I huffed. This is just another falsehood you broadcasted. That's not possible. This human says it's transmitted by eating flesh, Moronis protested, his tentacles flailing with frantic motions. The hunger is seen on Earth like every other world. We did this to save the sapient life. Tyler slammed a fist on the table. We don't need your salvation. We need two things. Your surrender and you personally to show us where you keep your prisoners. This is our galaxy to run, and we ain't gonna be keeping up the death and suffering circus. Cause you're the real predators. You've led the galaxy into ignorance, decline, and disarray. Your legacy is entropy, huh? I, uh, if my words haven't moved you, maybe that is all we leave behind. We were supposed to save lives, and without that purpose, the shadow cast is nothing. I'll order the workers to surrender and lead you to the place where we keep humanity's friends. Follow me. The Colchian chieftain stood with a defeated posture, reading from the human certainty that so-called prions were responsible for their plague. It was a positive sign that the Shadow Cast agreed to stand down, with their mission undermined and their fleet erased. I was relieved to hear that Terrans weren't a hazard, and that their signs had illuminated the dark corners of our past once more. When Moronus claimed to have a mountain of evidence on his side, it was the Predators who could interpret it correctly. All Sal, the other Colchian citizens listening, and anyone watching Tyler's video would see who was in touch with reality. Once we recovered our friends, the next item on the agenda would be to set the galaxy onto a better path. There were many issues to iron out, but with the Federation's lies and deceit stripped away, I was hopeful we could birth a new era of enlightenment. End of chapter. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.